Season 1 of Modern Warfare 2 drops on Wednesday, November the 16th and brings with it a ton of new features. This might be the longest fucking YouTube video I've ever made and has taken me hours of getting information together for you. So you better subscribe, you little shits. Just kidding. <laughs> Love you. But yeah, please sub. It's the release date of Warzone 2, the new DMZ extraction shooter, and multiplayer players will be seeing new content. We're going to break this down section by section, telling you each feature that's planned for Season 1. So get comfy, Call of Duty fans. This one's going to be a long one. That's what she said. Let's start off with the roadmap that Charlie Intel posted last night laying out Season 1. We'll go into each section in more depth, so let's just start with an overall view. For Warzone 2 in the top left, we'll be seeing our Mazra as the new map alongside DMZ as the new game mode. They're supposed to be a new gulag with new vehicles including the heavy chopper and hummer that's pretty cool as for features you'll see aquatic combat circle collapses that we've spoken about before proximity chat new buy stations third person game mode and interrogation I personally can't wait to go mad on the proximity chat and the content is going to be wild for this. For Modern Warfare 2, we've got the return of Shoot House 6v6 on Season 1 launch with shipment to follow in Season. A new raid mode is coming in Season alongside a new co-op mission and CDL mosh pit game mode. It kind of feels lazy that these are the maps that we're getting for Season 1, but it is better than some shit Cucumber Crossing instead. Moving over to the top right, we've got the new battle pass system which contains a new operator and new weapons. Modern Warfare FC as they call it will bring in Messi, Paul Pogba and Neymar Jr as limited time operator bundles. But dear lord, what have they done to Messi? Anyway, we're also seeing new weapons including the M13, Chimera AR aka the Honey Badger and new bundles and other operators including Gaz. All in all, aside the lazy maps, I'm quite happy with what we're getting so far. On to our first topic, we're taking a deep dive into Warzone 2. Warzone 2 alongside DMZ will be free to play from the 16th of November. It's important to mention that all of these game modes we refer to will all be cross-platform, available on all platforms, and with cross progression. Absolutely spot on chaps. These game modes should have FOV sliders for console players, making everyone have the same options when it comes to gameplay. Xbox One and PlayStation 4 players, however, may have some issues being last generation players. There's apparently limits on how many players can join a server at one time, so I'm unsure as to what this means for older gen players. The development of FOV for console, however, was always a hot topic after the first few years, so it's great to see this development coming through. And speaking of Warzone 1, it's been said that it will be changed to the official name Warzone Caldera. Rebirth and Fortune's Keep will be removed with COD points transferring to Warzone 2. And as always to reiterate as people still ask me, your items and skins do not transfer from Warzone 1 to 2. Consider it a fresh wipe, like you've just gone for a big stinking shit or something. As for people who prefer smaller resurgence maps, these are most likely to come at a later date. Charlie Intel has gone on to say that in Season 1 we're getting a third person playlist, so maybe try this for size if you want to switch things up. The menus are saying that battle royale modes will include at least 150 players similar to that of warzone 1 probably at least that's what i think was in warzone 1 i haven't played it in so long so tell me if i'm wrong in the comments please cheers and the blog over at call of duty also says that owners of modern warfare 2 will get an additional xp boost at the end of each warzone 2 match nice little incentive to grow their sales even more they're not fucking stupid are they apparently according to ghost of hope nukes will be available in warzone 2 and god knows how that will work but when i hear more information i'll make sure to let you know water mechanics have been improved and players will have the ability to dive down and shoot enemies swimming now also gives you a chance to survive if you end up in the water i can't wait to see some clips of what people end up doing to stay alive in some games. I give it a day before we see a viral water-based clip from Warzone 2 with some funny shit going on. In regards to vehicles, the mechanics you saw from the campaign I believe are going to be added to Warzone 2 as well. Being able to lean outside of vehicles to aim weapons, potentially stealing vehicles, and taking a car out piece by piece could all be in the game mode. That campaign mission where you do this ended up being one of the funniest experiences I've had on COD to date, and I'm sure again will make some interesting content. Things we mentioned in the intro including third circle collapses and proximity chat will all be in the game modes now this is going to create some serious chaos and finally loadouts the big daddy of discussions of warzone if we don't have loadouts then what's the difference between warzone and any other br on the market and if we do have loadouts then people complain about metas and people all using the same guns across the game ah the call of duty community yeah you just can't win but the news we do have on loadouts is that they are in fact going to be in the game originally we were told that they weren't but recent news has surfaced to say that they are now available three screenshots found online show the additions of loadouts with the ability to pick your gun when you get there. Charlie Intel states that loadouts can be picked up from shops with cash, public loadout drop events, and for clearing strongholds or black sites. This means that loadouts will now be more accessible than ever, so if you don't like meta BRs, 
this certainly won't be for you. As for more info with the strongholds and black sites, AI characters will be located there ready to engage you. Charlie Intel says that you'll need to clear these areas and disarm a bomb for a key to a black site. Black sites can offer even permanent weapon blueprints and more for players who spend time clearing them out. Black sites can even offer permanent weapon blueprints and more for players who spend time clearing them out. This sounds like a great incentive to push PvE gameplay into Warzone 2. Now, what do you think of this Warzone information so far? Will you be playing Warzone 2 and are you excited for the new map and features? And oh yeah, the ricochet anti-cheat system introduced in Vanguard will be present from day one in Warzone 2. Hopefully cheaters this year get the fucking hammer because I'm sick of seeing them. Mugs. Let's move on to the new DMZ game mode. DMZ, as you may or may not know, is a brand new extraction mode coming to Call of Duty for the first time. It will be free to play and dropped alongside Warzone 2 on the 16th of November. It's referred to as an escape from Tarkov based game mode where players will team up to fight for similar objectives. Earlygame.com's article explains that you'll drop into a large map in teams, fight against bots and other players and complete objectives before heading to an extraction point. They then go on to say that you'll have to complete a variety of objectives, including saving hostages, fighting bosses, taking over strongholds, and collecting intel. Now, the reason that I don't try or play Tarkov is because the pace of the game is far too slow for my liking. I completely understand the tactical element for people who want to play tactical extraction shooters, but it's not for me. But from what I'm seeing via the players who played this during the week is that it looks more like a glorified plunder game mode. There's apparently no economy and people camp the chopper for extraction at the very end. That is going to get fucking annoying. Moving forward, a screenshot from Charlie Intel shows Swag's perspective in DMZ checking out the backpack and his loadout. I'm not going to lie to you. The UI looks like shit. There's so much going on all over the place that it's just going to be a confusing mess for players. There are, however, sections that shows what's inside the backpack, including keys, weapon loadouts, and contracts on the right-hand side. And as for the buy stations, this is it. Honestly, it feels very bare bones at the moment with not all too much going on. I was expecting way more in-depth mechanics like crafting, survival guides, and more. It just feels like it's going to be plunder all over again. Plunder on these nuts. The menu screen looks decent with an interesting choice for solos on there. I'm curious to see if quads appear at any point. Now, before I give any more feedback on this, I'll need to try it for myself first. And remember, we'll have shared progression for the battle pass. So even if you're playing DMZ, you'll be able to level up your battle pass and access the rewards you deserve. The loadout.com website states that progression and items will also be seemingly shared with Warzone 2's progression, as it is a mode for the game. You're able to earn skins, blueprints, and more from DMZ that are usable across multiplayer and eventually Warzone 2 as the whole system is shared. Now, I love it when developers take the time to cross integrate progression with whatever you're playing. This way, you feel like you're achieving a common goal with your friends and don't feel isolated from playing only certain game modes. And in terms of what we know for maps, the DMZ mode will apparently be played on Warzone 2's new map, Almazra. This makes sense due to the large scale battles and probably the amount of teams involved within the game mode. So with the above said, what's your thoughts on the DMZ mode right now and will you be playing it? Make sure to let me know. Now on to multiplayer. We spoke briefly about the Battle Pass earlier on. The Battle Pass is making an appearance ready for Season 1, with Vault Edition owners unlocking the Seasonal Battle Pass with 50 tier skips. This should mean that we, as Vault Edition owners, get at least the first pass for free, and the first 50 rewards straight away. It's also said that the Battle Pass will contain the usual progression system of two free weapons, calling cards, emblems, cob points, and more. The Battle Pass will also, however, feature a brand new system. Similar to Fortnite, there will be 20 sectors with five items in each sector. You then use these tokens to go down the subsector that you want, selecting the rewards that you want. Basically, it allows you to get the shit that you actually want faster than just waiting for the very end. I like the innovation here personally. Let's just hope the UI isn't confusing and it's simplistic to differentiate each area. As for maps, I've spoken on my previous videos about the potential reintroduction of Shipment and Shoothouse. We're seeing Shoothouse drop straight away with Shipment coming later down the line. On a TikTok that I did, I even called them lazy for this as it's something that we probably could have got even from release even though it's a camo grinder's dream shipment has been so overused and so overdone oh well at least we'll be able to get a ryan camo easier shipment is however actually based on a ship this year so i'm curious to see how that's going to play and as for prestige is in my opinion 
we've got some great news. Yes, we're still getting seasonal prestiges, but it looks like we're finally evolving in some ways. Attached, we've got five prestige emblems that you'll be able to get across multiplayer, Warzone 2, and more. Those emblems are fucking fire, by the way. Well done, Infinity Ward, on the designs. Level 56 unlocks Prestige 1. Level 100 unlocks Prestige 2. All the way to 5th Prestige, which is unlocked at Season 1 level cap, 250. The number you reach at during each season will just continue on rather than reset for each season. This means that if you hit level 225, let's say, by the end of Season 1, you'll still continue until you progress past 250 for Season 2's benefits. These emblems are so much cleaner than what we've had in the last three titles, and I'm so glad we have a continuous level system versus the one that resets. Overall, even though it's not the original prestige system, I am happy with this. Apparently, you'll also have the chance to unlock additional rewards, emblems, and exclusive calling cards for going into prestige. I've been preaching this idea forever, and it's good that we're moving this way. As for operators, it's getting interesting. A screenshot from Charlie Intel shows Neymar, Pogba, and Messi all coming as limited edition bundles to Modern Warfare 2. And as I said in the intro, Messi's been done dirty here. Pogba and Neymar have clean colored skins, but Messi's operator doesn't even look like him. Not to mention his skin is fucking boring. How can you do the goat like that? And it's most likely, especially knowing Activision, that these bundles will be around 2400 CP each. As for other operators, we'll also have Gaz returning during season one to the operator list. I always love seeing Gaz in the Modern Warfare games. Moving on to weapons, we've been given an insight to four weapons making an introduction to Modern Warfare 2. The Victus XMR sniper rifle will be available to unlock via the battle pass on launch with season one. Snipers rejoice that actually added them in this game before six months down the game's life cycle. As for the second weapon, we'll be seeing the Bass P SMG, which will also be available at season one for launch on the battle pass. The M13B is making an appearance at launch for season one, and you won't even need to have the battle pass to use it. And finally, the big daddy is coming back. The Chimera assault rifle, also known as the Honey Badger, will be introduced to the game mid season outside of the battle pass. I personally can't wait to see that added to the game. Hardcore players, or should I say tier one players rejoice and camo grinders close your eyes because combat records and hardcore mode are being introduced to season one. Yes, we're finally going to be able to see our KDs and win loss ratio, hopefully with a leaderboard added to it. Now, if you're like me and you've been camo grinding, then good luck as these stats will probably look like shit. That Orion camo though. Competitive players will have the CDL mosh pit available with proper competitive game modes dropping in 2023. Don't forget that the CDL season for Call of Duty starts next month on YouTube, so make sure to check it out to keep up to date with all the teams. And finally, for multiplayer, PlayStation Plus members will get an exclusive combat pack for Season 1. This includes the only tactical operator, weapon blueprints, calling card, stickers, and more. Our final juicy section discusses raids coming to Modern Warfare 2. Raids are described as a three-player cooperative experience requiring teamwork and strategic puzzle-solving thinking in between bouts of intense combat. That's via the Call of Duty blog. But just so you're aware, raids are expected to drop at Season 1 Reloaded, which is scheduled for December the 14th, 2022. We know for a fact that there will be the new AI system that COD have implemented in here. I'm just curious on how they'll integrate this alongside the puzzle solving segment. Maybe two people would have to protect another whilst they're defusing a bomb or something cool like that. Something that really requires some form of teamwork to accomplish. And that pretty much brings us up to the end of this video. You're now fully equipped with the knowledge of every Everything you need for season one. So much content is expected to drop in the same day. Let's just hope they keep the quality aspect there just as much as the quantity. And if you need a live stream to watch the season one in action, I'm live almost every day from twitch.tv forward slash stallion and tiktok.com forward slash stallion where I stream simultaneously to both platforms. I'm very interactive with chat and I love running games with my viewers and subscribers. Thank you so much for taking the time to check out this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and I'll see you beautiful people on the next one.